First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the World Climate Research Program and the climate research community for the science advances reflected in the IPCC AR6 Working Group 1 report and for all the contributions to the report, including the review process, which is critical to produce a rigorous and robust assessment. Human influence on the climate is now unequivocal. The report has been designed to enhance the integration between climate science knowledge and its relevance for mitigation. A major scientific advance reflected in the report is the reduction of the long-standing uncertainty range for climate sensitivity. And this arises from the broad agreement across multiple lines of evidence, including paleoclimate information, as well as climate feedbacks and the dependence on climate state. For the first time in an IPCC report, the assessed future change in global surface temperature consistently combines scenario-based projections with different approaches based on observational constraints and the updated assessment of equilibrium climate sensitivity. As you know, our best estimate is that averaged over 2021 to 2040, global surface temperature will reach 1.5 degrees Celsius. And if greenhouse gas emissions just stay close to today's level during a few decades, a level of two degrees of global warming would be exceeded by around 2050. The near linear relationship between cumulative CO2 emissions and the global warming they cause implies that limiting human-induced warming requires limiting cumulative CO2 emissions, reaching at least net zero CO2 emissions, along with strong reductions in other greenhouse gas emissions. Strong, rapid and sustained reductions in methane emissions would also limit the warming effect resulting from declining aerosol pollution and would improve air quality. This highlights the short-term benefits of ambitious mitigation in terms of public health. The report also contributes to understanding climate-related risks through the assessment of relevant climate information, including climatic impact drivers and low likelihood, high impact outcomes. The framework of 30 different climatic impact drivers is used to describe physical climate system conditions, means, events, extremes, that affect an element of society or ecosystems. Human-induced climate change has already altered the profiles of climatic impact drivers, with shifts in magnitude, frequency, duration, seasonality and spatial extent of associated indices. With further warming, every region is projected to increasingly experience concurrent and multiple changes in climatic impact drivers. They would be more widespread at 2 degrees compared to 1.5 degrees of global warming, and even more widespread or pronounced for higher warming levels. Today, low likelihood outcomes, such as warming substantially larger than the assessed very likely range, or forest dieback, ice sheet collapse, abrupt ocean circulation changes, or some compound events, extreme events unprecedented in the observational record, cannot be ruled out. Their probability increases with higher global warming levels. Building on this report, I would like to bring to your attention the following three actions which could be targeted by the climate research community. One, increase our understanding of rare compound events that have a low likelihood of occurrence but potentially devastating effects. This includes the observational basis, process understanding, and fitness for purpose, purpose of models regarding rare extreme events, such as dangerous heat thresholds affecting multiple regions critical for global food security, or successions of events, such as such an event followed by a major volcanic eruption. Therefore, looking at the possibilities that include human-induced effects on extremes, their interplay with internal variability, and the interplay with natural drivers. Two, build bridges between the climate and ecosystem biodiversity research communities to better understand the effects of a changing climate and local pressures on ecosystems and their ability to store carbon. 
This is related to the potential reduced efficacy of carbon sinks in a warmer world. The potential and limits of so-called nature-based solutions and concerns about processes currently only partly included in Earth system models, such as forest dieback, fire, microbes in soils and in the ocean. Three, accelerate progress in Antarctic climate science, in particular related to Antarctic sea ice and ice shelves, as their future changes remain associated with deep uncertainty, but with potentially major relevance regarding the contribution of the Antarctic ice sheet for sea level rise. Thank you for your attention and have an excellent side event.